Welcome back to the Success Publishing Videocast. My name is Jessica Soto, and I am here with one of our co-authors today, Antoine Wingfield. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad yeah. to be here. We love interviewing our authors so that we just get to shine a light on their stories and their amazing work that they do in this world. Um, so, Antoine, could you tell us a little bit, like, the cliff notes of you and where you are in the world? Oh, yes, definitely. So, um, when I, whenever I introduce myself, I like to say, my name is Antoine. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Um, the flyest trachler and oxygen-needing ventilator-dependent guy you're ever going to meet in your life. And um, just a cliff note about me is that I'm a, a young man that's been through a lot of adversity. And um, I never turned my back. I never gave up. I kept going. Um, cause determine, determination has always been like a driving force in my life. So, uh, you know, you can't let our, our adversity determine who, who we are because our adversity doesn't determine our outcome. So if you're like determined to make something happen, Hey, you can make it happen despite, you know, the challenges or setbacks you might face in your life. Yeah, definitely. And I love your story. I think it's amazing. Um, and you are recently published. Obviously, we see the book behind you. So you're yes. recently published in Breakthrough Leadership. What did it feel like for you to get that book in the mail and hold it in your hands? Oh, man. The the feeling was just, like, unbelievable. Because, you know, I grew up in the inner city. And, you know, you never really dreamed about stuff like that until, like, you felt that book in your hand. And it was just, like, just that success. Because, you know, I've always set these goals in my life and you know whenever you say one goal it's like okay what can I do next so like going to college was after I reached a certain age and I realized hey college was was a possibility I was like okay I need to I need to make this happen I don't know how I'm going to make it happen but I'm going to make this happen and then now it's like one day you know just that thought of being an author you know started rolling around in your mind but you say man I don't I don't, I don't know if I can write a, a whole entire book and then and then the pandemic comes around and then uh, all of a sudden, I come across, um, I was doing one of Matt Matt's trainings, and then I seen an ad about how um, he was doing the Breakthrough Leadership Project, and he was looking to interview for Arthur, and um, I just submitted the application. I remember I had the interview, and then I was like, oh, th this might really happen, and then when I got the, the thumbs up and the invitation to be a part of the project, I was like, oh, man, I, I have the chance to be at Arthur, and it was just like an un unbelievable feeling, and it, it was so real, like, until, like, you actually had that book in your hand. It was just like, and then you see your picture and you're reading your words. And then it really didn't hit hit me until like somebody called me. It was like, hey, Antoine, I was just reading your story. Like I have your book and like my four-year-old wanted me to read like your story to her while I was like reading it. And it was just, so that was like the aha moment. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this is really, this really just happened. Like yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. That's awesome to hear. And you, I mean, you really hit the ground running. You went with the process and you trusted it and you like, you did all the things and you got here and it was awesome to watch. And you guys laid everything out like <laughs> so perfectly. So I just appreciate just everything you guys put together in the system that you guys have because it made it not as complex as it uh -huh. could be. So I think sometimes we overthink things and yeah, the fact that how you guys laid everything out and made it more attainable. and then. You know, I wasn't like, I never felt overwhelmed or I never felt like, oh my goodness, I can't make this happen. It was just, everything was so laid out perfectly. It just made things a lot more like, okay, I can take my time. I can breathe. Like, all I got to do is follow the system because it's laid out for me. So, all you got, as long as I can follow directions, <laughs> hey, there's no excuse for me not to be able to get this done. That is awesome to hear. So without giving away your chapter... Um, could we dive a little bit more into your story, just like a little more of your background, who you are, and how that brought you to becoming an author? Oh, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, who I am is, okay, so I've been through, I'm 36 years old. Um, I've been through 16 major surgeries and over um, 30, hospitaliza 30 hospitalizations, and um, I've had like three near-death experiences. And um, growing up, I've started having surgery when I was two years old, and um, I was given like a lifeline like hey he may not live to see a certain age so it's like so right off the back you know my mom was in my family was just like okay what are we going to do but at that same time it's like you know god is the only doctor to me that's never lost a patient so it's like I, I can't exactly say when it happened but i just feel like something happened when i was really young 
and God just kind of spoke to me and said, hey, you're going to go through a battle. It's not going to be easy, but as long as you just trust, believe, hey, and just always push forward. Like, don't worry, because you're going to you're gonna be fine. But when I reached 10 years old, that's when, that was like the deadline when the doctors didn't think I was going to see the age of 10. Once I see 10, once I saw 10, I was like, okay, you can't <laughs> stop me now. So now the only thing I had to work on was just, you know, accepting who I was and accepting my, you know, everything that was brought to me in life. Because I was always, I'm very little. I'm like four foot nine. So I'm like just shy of five foot. So like being around other people is like, you know, I'm smaller, a lot smaller than the average person. And um, I mean, I got scars all over my body. So like the first thing I had to do was really get and love myself. Because for many, it was a little rough just because I was different. I didn't look the same. I got scars all over my head. And so when I first started going to public school, it was, it was, it was different because, you know, kids are evil sometimes. They, they, they can be mean. And when you don't look like they look, you know, they want to make fun of you. They want to be mean and say, so it was like, I really had to learn at an early age to accept who I was and realize that I was a strong, resilient person. Like, you know, by eight years old, by 10 years old, I had already, I think, been over like eight surgeries at that point. So it was like, you are strong. So despite you, your stature doesn't mean you're weak or this and that. Like you're 10 years old, you've already been through a major surgery. So I had to tell myself how strong I was. And so once I realized that, you couldn't stop me. So once I, I had that moment where I was like, okay, Antoine, think about what you've been through and live with that. So but once I accepted that, I was like, you couldn't stop me. My confidence level was through the roof. And, um, and I just started living life according to my, my terms. And after that, it was just, you couldn't stop me. And, um, and that just kind of carried me over in life. I went to college despite growing up in the inner city and um, graduated at the top of my class in high school and went to KU. Um, my alumni, like I love that school to death, proud to be a Jayhawk. And then um, I graduated, once I graduated from KU, I started working with um, a juvenile, juveniles in the system. Um, so it was like a, it's like a lower level probation. So whenever they would um, get arrested, they would have to be with me to kind of work over, work off their charge. So I got to do that. And then um, I got real sick in 2010 and 2013 and 14. And that kind of put a damper on my job because I was, um, it got really bad. Almost, almost died a couple of times. I had pneumonia, H1N1, my lung collapsed. It was, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. But then in 2010, I remember getting real sick with the pneumonia, H1N1 and lung collapse. And um, once I got out of the hospital, I was like, I'm going back to school because I was already fighting going back. I was like, oh, man, I just did all that five years. I was like, I'm done. I don't want no more school. But something was telling me like, hey, Antoine, you, you've always been that type of person that never, that never stopped. That always, you always go for the next big thing. So I was like, don't let, because I think what scared me was like statistics, accounting, and finance. I was like, I'm not, so I was trying to get, I wanted to get my MBA. But I like, I hate math. Like, uh, I hate math. So when I went to the information, when they, they talked about the different classes, I was like, whoop, I'm not doing it. I don't want to take statistics. That class is scary. But I remember when I got sick in 2010, I sat there in my bed and I, and I prayed and I said, like, hey, if I get it, if I make it through this, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to do the program. So as soon as I got out of the hospital, I made, I, I recovered. I made the call to, I went to Baker University. I made the call and I started the program and then I didn't look back. And then um, I finished. And then that's when I got real sick in 2013. So I actually spent my graduation in the hospital. But um, it was a good experience because, I mean, the nursing staff was so amazing. Um, we had a party in my room. Um, they dressed me up in my cap and gown. And um, we, walked, we walked around like the floor. Because I spent six months. And between 2013 and 2014, I was in and out of ICU for like a good six months. So it was, it was rough. So I was like, it was New Year's, Christmas, graduation. Uh, Valentine's Day was all spent in the ICU and hospitals, but um, the nursing staff made it um, the best they could. And then my family, you know, was always in and out. So it was, um, so that's kind of been like my story. It's always been, you know, one thing after another with my health. And then also growing up in the inner city, you know, uh, my biological father was incarcerated and, you know, so, you know, it's always, life always tries to bring you down if you let it, but mm -hmm. you have to be able to kind of like not make excuses. And yeah, that's always yeah. been kind of my, my approach. I can't make excuses. You know, when I, one thing happens, you just got to get creative with your thinking and say, okay, yeah, this is going on, but let's find out a way to keep going. 
And that's that's kind of like my philosophy in life is just to always keep going and not to let anything hold you back and not to make excuses. That's awesome. I love that you're always making and then keeping promises to yourself about the next step, no matter if it feels hard or what comes your way or getting hospitalized. That's just, that's what I'm going to do. So that's what I'm going to do. That's, that's well, I mean, life solid. is hard. Life, mm -hmm. life is hard. So we all, we know that mm -hmm. and we know things come up, but if you just, you know, take your time and like take deep breaths and just say, hey, take it one step at a time. You can over, you can go overcome more than you think you can. Mm -hmm. You just can't let things overwhelm you. You just have to like, sometimes just slow it down, take a couple deep breaths and just think and like, okay, this is going on and maintain a positive attitude. That's key right there. Um, I always say there's three things in life that we can control. We can control what we believe. We can control our attitude and we can control our language. And as long as you focus on that, I think sometimes in life we waste too much energy and time on what we can't control. Mm -hmm. But if you focus on what you can control and you keep a cool head, you can accomplish more than you think you can. But when you allow yourself to be overwhelmed and you always think of why this or why that, why me, and you stay in that victim role, you're going to make a hard situation harder than it needs to be. But when you can just slow down, focus on the positive and just and try to stay calm and focus on your belief, your attitude and your language you'd be surprised um, what you can accomplish. Yeah, I love that message. Um, do, how do you feel about, you know, everybody reading this and what you hope they can get out of your story? Uh, man, the fact that someone's reading like words that I wrote, it just, it warms my heart like so much because I feel like there's a reason that God, like I'm here on this earth. Like I still have 16 surgeries. I've been hospitalized over nearly 30 times and the fact that, you know, I've had three near-death experiences. Like, I've coded code blue a couple of times while I've been in the hospital. Like, because, you know, my mom would always, my family would tell me stories of what happens. Like, because sometimes when, you know, stuff goes on in the hospital, you're not aware of it mm -hmm. until, like, someone tells you. And, like, I would have had no idea that, that I had a code blue. And so when you hear those stories and then you can look back and say, man, like, I overcame that. So it's just like... The fact that someone can read my story, I just hope that the words would just help change their perspective. Because, like, I, I think that my problems are no bigger than no one else's. Regardless of what I've been through, we all go through battles. And, and what, what makes us different is how we look at those battles. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what makes us different. You know, no matter how big it is, no matter how hard it seems, like, we all go through stuff. And as long as you can look at it the right way. So I like to say there's no such thing as the problem is not the problem. It's our perspective on the problem is what the issue is. If you look at a problem and you like are, this is hard and you have a negative attitude, that's your perspective. So that's what the problem is. But if you can look at a problem and you say, hey, this might be hard to overcome, but hey, I can make it happen. I just got to sit down, brainstorm, and just believe and visualize. Visualize what you want your outcome to be. And then you'd be surprised like the difference it makes. So if you can change your perspective, and that's what I hope my words in this book and this book will do will help change people's perspective and help them see like, hey, I'm going through a battle right now. But hey, if this little man can go through all this, then shoot, I can I can go through this too, regardless of, of yeah. what we go through. I think it's beautiful that you who have been through so much, so much more than most, you know, the average person and have faced death can look, you have that perspective of, I've been through this, yeah, and that really <laughs> wasn't fun, mm -hmm. but I know that everybody has their battles and their, you know, even if it's not literally near life, near death experience, it feels like it to them and how, how to get through you know, it. We all deal, we all deal with stuff on different levels. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of times I have to tell friends of mine, because sometimes um, friends will feel bad coming to me when they want to mm -hmm. talk to me about their issues, because they... They want to compare their issues of mine. And I and I always like kind of reassure them like, hey, if what you're going through, if that's hard for you, it's hard for you. That don't mean mm -hmm. that my battles are bigger than yours. So I always yeah. have to remind them, never feel guilty about coming to me because I'm I'm quick to talk to anybody about anything. And I never will look at somebody and like, are you really complaining about that? I would never do um, anything like that because we awesome. deal with our battles on on different levels. So um, that's important is that we have to be there for each other and and like I said, I never look at my battles and try to compare it to someone else's because, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe I'm able to deal with these, you know, tough battles. But if 
like losing a boyfriend or a girlfriend is it's hard for you and that like makes you really over that's that means a lot to you. so that means that's your issue so let's work on that together and don't feel and like I, I would like i said i would never think that my battles are bigger than any, anyone else's yeah that's that's an amazing perspective and i i do hope that readers get that out of your story and and listen to this and hear that because that's, that's wonderful <laughs> Um, so I know you said, you know, you like, you set these goals, you hit them, you wanted college, you wanted, um, you know, your MBA program and, you know, the idea of a book was cool, but you had no idea how to do it. But why was now the time to become an author and step into that power? I actually always like look at the positive and anything. So the pandemic was, (laughs) has been horrible. It's been, you know, really tough and with um, my he- health issues in the pandemic, my doctors kind of put put like their foot down and like kind of put me on house arrest in a way because mm-hmm. um, if I was to get COVID, it, it to them they said it could kill me because I have um, a lung condition also along with everything else, and um, they said that if hey you contract COVID, it can your lungs are already compressed and like you know don't function fully, so um, COVID could really not be a good thing. So I was forced to sit at home and then like I worked at, I'm working, I'm a supervisor at Main Event Entertainment. And so for the first time since I was 14, I couldn't work. So mm-hmm. I'm sitting at home and I'm looking for different things to to keep my mind occupied because you can only watch so much Netflix and TV and yeah. play games. So um, I try to always feel like to exercise our mind because if you don't try to like, I always try to like 1%. If you always try to improve yourself 1% every day, it keeps you fresh, it keeps you knowledgeable. So um, I just will sit down and you always like to say, you always have your goals in life that you want to do. But sometimes when you work on a daily basis and you you're, you stay so busy with your day-to-day, you don't take the time to sit and think, okay, how can I accomplish this goal that I want to accomplish? So sitting at home, having all this free time, I was able to sit at home and start researching different things. And that's how I came across the whole book idea. So now uh-huh. it's like, oh, I have no excuse. Like you have time. So like, uh-huh. hey, why not keep yourself busy and, and write? Uh, this chapter in this book so you don't have to feel so overwhelmed that you have to write an entire book here's your chance to still be an author without having to think about writing a whole entire book so and so that was kind of my philosophy is like I have no excuse you have this opportunity right here you have you have the time you have the plan that tells you how to do it you have no excuse Antoine so (laughs) like I said no living a no excuse kind of life has always been my philosophy so I had no excuse now so it's like hey here you're here's the opportunity, here's this, here's that, let's go for it. And then I, I, never, I didn't look back, I just kept going. That's so cool. Uh, so, I mean, I know that you, from an early age, you had that mentality of, I can do this, I'm powerful because I've been through these things, but how, or it has, becoming an author changed the way you feel about yourself at all? Um, it just gives you that, another notch under your belt, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, success is in, is important and see, I want to be able to look back and like even when I leave this earth I would love to leave something here that someone could always have you know so that's that's a piece of me and if as long as someone's reading my words they're getting a, a piece of my mind they're getting a piece of my thoughts they're 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 getting something that can maybe help them maybe accomplish something in their life so so that just it just makes me feel more accomplished you know I feel like in life we should always be be moving forward and so just to know that mm-hmm. that I am a published author now and just to say that it just gives you that authority it gives you that you know I mean I feel like I'm already a confident person but that always that just gives me another notch up in my belt and then you know sometimes people look at you different like like wow he's like a published author and I, and, and sometimes it's like you get that that belief well yeah I'm a published author but it's only a chapter but so it's just, but then people's like no you are regardless you're still you're an author so sometimes I have to tell myself yeah just be, I may not have wrote the whole book but people like oh my goodness Antoine you got a book out like yeah but it's only it's only a chapter in the book but they but them they don't care they just they care that hey you're a published you're in a book and your face is on this book and it looks pretty yeah. darn good so yeah. um so sometimes you just I have to remind myself that like hey take the accomplishment love it and um don't be proud I'm not proud of it but at that same time you know don't try to downgrade just because it's a chapter, it doesn't mean anything. Because that's what a lot of people have done, told me. They was like, oh, you got a book. I was like, yes, but it's only a chapter. Like, like still, they like, you're published. You're like, love it. 
So, I, so that just sometimes I have to remind myself, like, hey, That's take awesome. the win and um enjoy it. Yeah. Were there any big surprises out of this experience for you? The fact that I can like actually write it. So I'm like, I'm not the best writer. Like I'm a speaker. You put a mic in my hand, put me on a stage. Hey, I, I'll rock the crowd. I'll do whatever. But like writing was never like, it's not my favorite thing to do. So mm-hmm. th- th- it would surprise me. Like once I sat down and I started typing the words that came out and it was hard because, you know, I've been through a lot and to be limited to 21 words was was mm-hmm. not easy because there's so much that goes into my story and so many different parts so I really had to kind of get creative with the words and to, to make sure that the key points were hit so people can understand and get like a big outcome because my story kind of it, it's, it's a journey so the surgeries at a young age started at two and what happened then has led to my issues now because because they didn't, you know, think I was going to live that long. And, you know, at the time I was born with scoliosis, severe scoliosis and um, neurofibromatosis. And so that's kind of made some issues now that I've gotten older has led to my lung issues because I have metal rods in my back. And with the metal rods, when they installed those, they didn't leave a lot of room for um, my insides like to kind of function so my lungs are like really compressed so they don't expand like the average person so that's kind of lit so I wanted to make sure that I could hit those key points so it surprised me that I was able to to say what I wanted to say with the words that I had and and, like just the fact that I was able to sit down and as you start to write you start to think oh maybe I can write a book you know Uh a whole book because you start to see like the different stories you've been through and the different things that you want to say and the different because like this life has been crazy and uh, I've had a lot of amazing things in life and um you know maybe people want to hear it maybe people don't so um it just it was it did surprise me that as I sat there and started writing it you know the words just started coming out so it was it was a good process that's awesome and then what's next for you like what's the next yeah it's a good question um the next thing for me is um becoming a motivational speaker and um a life coach so I've kind of already started I'm doing different events. I got booked to do this um, virtual event called the Resilient Initiative. We actually just recorded a couple weeks ago. It's coming out. Um, I've done some podcasts. I've gotten invited to uh, I entered a speaking competition just last year, and I'm out of 180 people. I made it to the final eight, which was like uh, final eight out of 180. I made it to the finals, and since then, um, that's opened up a lot of doors because the the judges that were judging the competition were actually event planners who put people on stages and um i've been you know they've contacted me since and like i said i've done some podcasts um i did the resilient initiative and a friend of mine just actually called me the other day and our mom works for a company and they want to bring me in to maybe do to speak on something i actually got to call her today to see um what you know the plan is and kind of what they're looking for and so it's like so really becoming a public uh, motivational speaker and um, doing life coaching. So I'm kind of looking at a program now. They're kind of expensive, but um, I'm going to try to fundraise to help fund the program. So that way, because whenever, whenever I do something, I want to make sure I'm the best at it. I want to make sure that I have that foundation and I want to have the right information so I can be the best life coach and the best motivational speaker that I can be. So I'm actually doing a program right now as far as it breaks down the motivational speaking process and getting into the schools. I really want to reach out to our youth because I feel like um, the youth are, are so important. They're so like, they go through so much right now. So if you can really instill in them the right mindset now, that's going to catapult them into the future and they'll be more equipped to deal with the challenges because, you know, you're going to face a lot and the young people need to understand that and they need to know like, hey, just because you might face these battles in life, don't let it stop you. Keep going. And that's why I really want to get into their minds and get into a position where I can, you know, speak to the youth. So I want to start learning how to get into the schools and um, businesses, schools, whoever wants to hire me. Um, I want to make it happen. So I'm looking at the coaching program and I'm doing the motivational speaking right now. That's amazing. Well, congratulations. That sounds like the next big step for you and you're doing it. So you're, you're in it and I'm I can't trying. wait to see. <laughs> I'm trying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. It was great to get to know more of your story and you. Um, Again, you can find Anton Wingfield, Breakthrough Leadership on Amazon.com. And thank you for joining us. Yes, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much for 
to all the readers. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Coach Tweezy, K-U. And um, I will have a website live at www.workingtowardyourdream.com. And um, I thank you to everyone who supported me. And thank you to Matt Morris and you and all everyone involved with your program. So um, I appreciate it. Yeah.